The Rise Today inspirational podcast is brought to you by two relentless health warriors. Dr. Erica Harris, an empowered mindset health expert who is the passionate founder of risetoday.com and Megan Hubner, an entrepreneurial marketing strategist and founder of meganhubner.com. These two inspirational forces have truly thrived through adversity and are here to empower you to do the same. Together, they serve to open up the conversation about hardship and to move you to greatness through your adversities. Learn more at risetoday.com forward slash podcast. Now, let's get started. Let's rise today, right here, right now. Hello, hello, hello to our Rise Today community. We are so happy to welcome you back. If you are one who has faced grief or loss, we truly hope you have found strength and inspiration from our last show where we featured Sharon Musket, Australia's leading expert on grief and loss. Today's show is all about adaptability and finding and fueling our life's purpose. And as they say, it's not strength, it's not our knowledge that leads to our greatest success, but it's the power to adapt and find that life purpose. Brian Bashan is our featured guest today, and we are so honored to have him here with us today. He is here to lead the way for us on this very topic. Brian is an ordained Catholic priest who served in a Roman Catholic church in Boston, and he went against the grain to follow his true calling. And he is here today to share the tools to inspire and empower you to follow your heart if you find yourself in the same situation. Megan, can you please help us welcome Brian to the show? Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number 12. Brian, we're so happy that you're here with us. Thank you. It's a real joy. Thank you so much. You bet. Where in the world are you joining us from today? I am joining you from Toronto, Canada. Okay, Toronto, Ontario. Fantastic. So we've just finished our Canadians Thanksgiving weekend it um, of the day of this recording. And we want to say, you know, thank you guys all for joining us today. And we hope that all of you Canadians during this wild time that we're living right now have found an opportunity to have some quietness this weekend, get along uh, with your friends and your family. And I hope that you really enjoyed some of that stillness. So today, Brian, can you share with us a little bit about your story? You are now in Toronto. You were previously, as Erica mentioned, practicing um, in the U.S. That's correct. So you have now moved to Canada. So tell us a little bit about your story and how, you know, where you are today. Yeah, happy to. So happy to give you like the nutshell version of the life of Brian yeah. uh, for our <laughs> listeners and uh, kind of bring up to speed. So I was born and raised in Boston, and after going to undergraduate in Ohio, I went back to Boston, and I went to the seminary, and uh, it was a Catholic seminary. I went there for five years, and then I served as a priest uh, for eight years for the Archdiocese of Boston. Four of those years were in a parish uh, just west of the city. It was fantastic, and then for the last four years, I served for the Cardinal, um, as his like private uh, priest secretary. To translate that, it would be kind of uh, chief of staff and traveled okay. to the archdiocese you. and the world with him. And then I decided of my own uh, free choosing to move in a new direction, to bring my life, my gifts, uh, the love that was in my heart uh, in a new direction. And I left and I started an entirely new life in New York City. And I was there for several years. I transitioned into the world of philanthropy, raising millions of dollars uh, for mission-based uh, organizations. And I ended as executive director at NYU Medical. And then I moved to Toronto. And I was in Tor Toronto doing the same. Uh, also became a partner in an executive search company. And then I decided to go to my own. And coming up on the one year anniversary of the founding of my company, oh, congratulations. Evolution, Evolution uh, next month. And so it's a uh, global coaching consulting uh, company that focuses on one-to-one -one work with professional leaders, also with organizations and a new recruitment model and uh, in public speaking and empowering others to evolve to their highest purpose. That's Love amazing. It. Now you Love have it. 
just summed up your evolution, evolution right there in the last, you know, 60 seconds. Um, take us back a little bit, if you wouldn't mind. You made a statement there that really hit me. You said, I left and you were a Catholic priest at the time and you were progressing in your career and you had obviously worked really hard and were quite passion driven for this career that you started. Mm -hmm. How did you get to a point to say, hey, wait a minute, I need to correct my, correct my, you know, my direction and I need mm -hmm. to leave. Yeah. So great question. So, you know, it's, it's one of those decisions that it just didn't happen overnight, right? Yeah. It's one of those things that it, it builds over time. So I was ordained a priest. I had just turned 27. So I was young. Mm -hmm. So subtract five years from that. That brings you, you know, to 22 when Even you enter the seminary. Yeah. <laughs> and then from university. So I was young. Um, but I, I knew what I was being drawn into. You know, there was a sense of desire to serve. Um, I was raised Catholic. So for myself, it was a real sense that the only way you could really serve on that kind of spiritual side and make impact it was the church it was kind of the natural place to go for me at that time. And so what really happened was when I started working for the Cardinal, which was an amazing gift, my life changed overnight. I was very young of all the priests. He selected me to work with him. So I, I lived with him. I traveled with him, uh, worked with an amazing team of individuals that managed his schedule. I was his master of ceremonies. When he went to Rome, I went to Rome. When he went wow. to... Uh, anywhere in the world, I was right there next to him. And so he's being groomed for probably other leadership positions mm -hmm. in the church in years to come. But there was a part of me that started to realize that I also wanted to maybe live in a different way. And, you know, when I was working for the Cardinal, I wasn't saying mass like I did when I was in the parish. I wasn't baptizing babies or going to funerals or helping people in crisis. It was a quieter role. It was very administrative. And I didn't miss the parish as much. But I, I also felt that I wanted to also be, kind of bring my gifts in a different way. And at the same time, I kind of came to terms with who I was, that I, I wanted to I love like another that. person and came to terms that I wanted to be an out gay man that could love another person and bring my gifts and spirituality into the world. And so I worked for about nine months or so with a, a wonderful psychologist in Boston uh, to help me really look at the decision. And, you know, because I wanted to make sure that I was looking at things clearly to be challenged. There's a lot of emotion that is attached to that. It's like a relationship, right? Mm -hmm. There's expectations, there's fears, there's doubts, financial questions. And that really helped me work through that process to make a clear, informed decision that brought me much peace. That's, that's amazing because, you know, that like, a, like I said, that statement that you made is that I wanted something different. You do have to do a bit of that quiet work. You kind of have to figure out and go inside of yourself to figure out what that really is. You know, you could make a quick rash decision and quit the next day and move on into something. But if you are doing that without spending the time with yourself, to really see who you are, it kind of, you get kind of caught up in that whirlwind or rat race a little bit, if you would. Yeah, absolutely. Again, so that's and, awesome. Yeah. And the other thing too, is I also took the great responsibility that I, I knew there were, you know, I'd given my life to the church and there I had given my life freely to be of service to so many people. And I really wanted to make a decision that was, I knew it would impact others. Just like being a priest can be a positive mm -hmm. impact. I also knew my departure would also make an impact. And if I wasn't grounded and focused in the right decision, it was going to not go well. And yeah. uh, so that was really important to me. You talk a lot about this impact and it's such an important word. And I know from our previous conversations, Brian, you're very impact driven. And that is obviously how we truly fuel our life's purpose and our mission behind what we're doing. And I always, recommend to live out the legacy that we want to leave today, right? And you have followed your heart to do just that. And it's so admirable. Um, you came to terms with who you really were. And I love that in finding your impact behind that. It's so important. And you also touched base on the importance of getting support, right? When we're facing this big decision. And so you reached out 
to a psychologist, as you said, but whether it's a coach, a psychologist, or whoever, mm-hmm. whoever you're reaching out to, it's so important mm-hmm. to go through that process to really help identify further questions and dig deeper. And so I really admire that you took the steps to do so. Mm-hmm. Tell us, Brian, tell us what were the biggest hardships you faced in that decision? And mm-hmm. how did others accept that decision that you had made? Yeah. That's a superb question. The hardest aspect um, are the all the expectations that we put on ourselves, and especially for me, was how is this going to be received by my family? How is this going to be received by people that loved me and looked up to me in a certain way? And that was one of the hardest things. So, you know, it was quite interesting when I made the decision, you know, to leave working with the psychologist, which was such a gift. Uh, I have to say, I kept my circle tight. Mm -hmm. So I worked with the psychologist. There were a couple of very good trusted friends that I also kept kind of in touch with and let them know where things were going. Because, you know, you were a public figure. I wanted it to be tight and, and I wanted it to really be clear. One of the hardest things was I knew I was going to made the decision that October was going to be the time that I told the Cardinal uh, that I was going to, I wanted to leave. But a couple months before that, my father had been diagnosed uh, with cancer and it was uh, stage four lung cancer. So now all of a sudden there's this family dynamic, you know, that's going on and he was getting treatment and he was actually doing quite well. And I made the decision to tell my father first. And I remember going to the home, you know, to see him and because I knew telling my mother first was going to be a little more challenging. There were going to be more issues around that. And I had been dropping some hints uh, a few months before that, you know, just different things. So trying to like plant the seeds in the field. So they kind of knew something was coming. But my father was amazing. I remember he looked at me and he just simply looked at me and I was kind of very emotional, you know, and I was talking to him. And here he, he, he's facing his own mortality. You know, he died a couple months later and he looked at me and he said, I may not understand everything. And he said, even sometimes I may not agree, but he said, I respect you at the highest level for the decision. And I am with you as you move forward. Awesome. And that was amazing. That was really amazing. That was not the same from the same kind of feedback I got from my mother. That was a little more challenging and took a much longer time to try and bring some of that uh, healing and, and openness to that conversation. And there were also a couple of friends um, that, you know, were very Catholic, that they were always excited about when I was, you know, when I became a priest, when I started working for the Cardinal, when they saw me at the Vatican, they were always supportive. But when I told them honestly of why I was deciding to leave and, you know, all the work I had done, some of them became very angry, very hostile, and I never heard from them ever again. I think in that and situation, it makes them question everything, right? It really did. It yeah. really did. And, but it goes back to your great question earlier too, but I'm so grateful I did the work because mm-hmm. if I had not done the work, their reactions could have really been detrimental. Yes. And, and I have to say, even when they were hostile, whether it was a family member or if it was a friend, it never shook me to my core. It was disappointing, but I still remained firmly rooted mm-hmm. and I knew it was the right decision. I think that is so powerful, is really understanding what you guys want. What do you want from your one amazing life that you have and being deeply rooted in trying to find out what that is will then help you with all of those tough conversations and will help you as people come and go in your life will help you as you start questioning yourself because you're taking maybe a path that's a bit more challenging Mm -hmm. and yeah I think that is just so important you talked about also keeping a tight circle and I like how you phrase that very much because in times of change or hardship or adversity, it really is so important to narrow down that circle and that community of support. Mm -hmm. And in those big times, you especially want only those that fuel you and that build you up. And I really like that phrase of keeping that circle tight. And I think it's a really important aspect that others also uh, consider when they are making such change. 
Yes, absolutely. And it made a huge difference. I mean, it really did. Yeah. Uh, they were there, you know, the night that I told them I was going to speak to the Cardinal, you know, to let him mm -hmm. know they were like on standby, you know, and okay. I got back to the room, like right there to call. And it, it really was a blessing. Like they were mm -hmm. such a gift at that moment that made me feel so secure of moments that maybe I doubted not my decision, but what's this going to mean? And how do I do? How do I handle this? They were just like my cheerleaders, they were supporters, and they also challenged. They mm. also challenged me sometimes to think a little different. You know, Brian, I think you're thinking too small about this, you need to look at this mm -hmm. kind of job opportunity. So that was a real blessing. And so I encourage people, you know, that sometimes the temptation is when you're going through a hard time, Oh, you know, you think more the more the merrier that can be around you, but actually that can work against you. And so sure. Yeah, really can. Especially when you're doing something that's against the grain, because so often our society yes. we say, "Hey, what do you think?" Hey, Erica, like I've got this great idea. What do you think? And we ask for all this external feedback, mm -hmm. and in actual fact, the only feedback that we need to be asking is the internal stuff. Is this aligned with where I want to go? Is this, you know, doing what I want to do? Is this moving me closer to my purpose or my passion or the things mm -hmm. that I love to do? Otherwise, um, you're right. Otherwise, it just gets too too much noise that yes. we're processing and we can't hear our yes. own voice, and it's Absolutely. so important. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, changed everything. Brian, really. I have a question for you from your work that you describe. Tell yeah. us for our listeners, what are tools that they can use? Let's say they decide to go against the grain and follow their passion and follow their heart. What are tools that you learned from your work that can help them stay, stay strong during those hard conversations with their families or friends when things can become more hostile and angry in nature? Yeah. What are tools that you can share with our listeners to give them the strength and the courage to kind of stay the course in those moments? Yeah. So I would say, number one, do not speak and share your news until you are ready. That's number Great. one. Excellent. And I, and I really mean that when I was able to share my news with family and friends, I anticipated, and I actually spoke about with my psychologist, a couple of friends, what I anticipated some of the feedback to be almost like worst case scenarios. So I was prepared. So when I did speak, I was overwhelmed by the positive affirmations mm -hmm. and love I received. But when I did receive some of the hostile aspect, I was ready because I had done the work and I was ready to then speak. It's my truth to tell no one else's. It's yeah. my decision to make no one else's. And so when I'm ready for that, then I can say it. So that's number one. I would say, you know, speak when you're ready. And I think, you know, what I also would tell people is, you know, when I was at that point, I said, you can ask me any questions. I'm happy to share, you know. So I think that also showed you were very open and it was integrated and, and that made it really, really helpful. I think the other aspect is, you know, when you're in those moments, you have to have a plan. <laughs> you know, I think it's important to put a plan together as well. That was really helpful for me. So not at the very beginning when I started working with the psychologist, but in the couple months into it, when I got a sense, you know, I think I'd like to leave in the early in the new year, like that January. So then I could start kind of working backwards. Like, what are some mm -hmm. of the things I need to do? And at the same time, the good thing about that was it didn't hold me like if I, I was flexible, you know, by October, I'd like to be here, but maybe it won't be there. But those were benchmarks that really helped keep me on point, taking mm -hmm. inspired action. You mm -hmm. know, you want a new job? Well, you got to start looking for a new job. And how do you do that? And so that, that also helped the momentum going along as well. And, and those are really important things. And, and sharing that with that trusted inner circle of saying, gee, my hope is to be at this point next month. This is what's happening. Um, and that was really great. I really love this, like creating this plan before you come forth and you almost sound like you reverse engineered your plan. Yeah. And as I, as I always tell my coaching clients that I work with, expect the best, but prepare for the worst mm -hmm. and plan mm -hmm. out those hostile conversations and almost craft out your response in advance because things aren't always going to be smooth sailing. So Absolutely. I really admire that. 
And I think inspired action is really all, it's just small steps. So you guys, if you are wanting or desiring a big jump, like Brian has made in the past year, is that inspired action just needs to happen every single day in small steps to get you towards the goal. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be, I'm going to quit my job in eight months. And, you know, you kind of need to, like you said, quit your job in eight months. Okay. So what does that mean? What, do, what can I do today? to get mm -hmm. me to where I want to go. That's going to be, make me closer by tomorrow and by the next day and stuff. So Absolutely. taking small little bites out of what it is you actually want to accomplish is going to get you to that larger really end goal. Absolutely. And, th and that's kind of what I did. Like those inspired steps, for example, I had to write a resume, you know, <laughs> and I've shared this before and like, seriously, like I was overwhelmed. Like I sat down to Google, like, okay, best resumes and formats. And really, I and a tsunami of all these emotions came over me of like, like fear and doubt and not knowing yes. what to do. And I called a very good friend of mine uh, who was a lawyer, was a good friend. And I, I said, I, I don't know what to do. And he said, you know, come over. And he helped me walk through what skills are transferable, how to look mm -hmm. at things. But that was an inspired step because once I had that, then that helped me to then start to apply for positions. Yes. And then it helped me looking at my network. Oh, okay. Like here's like five people I could reach out to that I could trust and kind of share where I'm at. So each totally. inspired step leads to the next one. And, and that's, what's really important. And if you're in the right decision and you're in the moment of making that decision, I'm a, I believe this a hundred percent and it happened to me, things will, the universe will start to align things for you oh, all God, of a yes. sudden. People will come into your life. A situation will come along when you least expect it. And you get more clarity and affirmation. And that, those are the, like, those are the, the winks. I call them the winks from above yep. that are showing you you're going the right direction and to follow mm -hmm. them. Absolutely. These signs yeah. from above. I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. You just, you just need to be open to you actually seeing that sign because otherwise these signs can pass us left and right and we have no clue because we're just not open we've got that tunnel vision on and we are just thinking okay how am i going to get to this big thing that i want to do and we're not paying attention to the little little things that are coming right. our way and opening our awareness and stuff so awareness yeah. is huge too yeah and i think the other thing is too you know sometimes there were some signs or people that came across my path that i engaged with them and they were helpful in the moment, but then nothing really happened. You know, mm -hmm. I'm just thinking of one particular individual that I, I was inspired to reach out to. I had met, I knew he had lots of contacts. He was very helpful in a couple of phone conversations of saying, oh, you'd be great at this. You might want to think about this. I'm going to make some connections for you. And it never happened. And at first, you, know, you start thinking, oh, like, why did that mm -hmm. happen? He did not believe I could do it. You have to remove those things away, but sometimes it's just for that experience that you took that inspired action, you got information because it helped you in that moment. I think that's a really good point is that not playing the blame game. You can choose to be the victim of someone else not connecting the dots for you, or you can say, oh, well, that person was supposed to, and if they did, I would have been really successful, but actually it doesn't have anything to do with anyone else. It has everything to do with you. Absolutely. And what is happening, you know, and you could look at it and say, okay, well, that didn't follow through, but you know what, if I still want that end goal, I can go about it a different way or something, but you guys own, you know, you own your success. You really yes. do. Absolutely. And it's not the man who didn't follow through's fault that you didn't get to the next step, right? If find that resourcefulness within yourself to say, mm -hmm. Hey, okay, that didn't work out. What, what's next? What's, what's mm -hmm. going to work out next? Or who am I going to connect up with next? Yeah. And unless we have that accountability, there's no room for growth because we're always apportioning that blame to someone else yeah. or somewhere else. And so that accountability is such a big piece. Now, Brian, tell us how you are serving our great world right here, right now, and tell our listeners how they can reach out to you. Yeah, thanks. So I am in Toronto. It's the home base. I'm very uh, proud to be a dual citizen of obviously I'm an American, but also of Canada as of last year. And um, I Welcome. founded a company called Evolution Evolution. Uh, it'll be one year in November. Uh, I launched it on 11 11, November 11. Wow. And uh, actually, I launched it on November 11th at 11 11 in the morning. That was when the website and everything went up. So it was 11 11 11. And um, the company, I called it Evolution Evolution because uh, the first evolution is our natural evolution. 
uh, of who we are, the family we're born into, the DNA that we have, how a pandemic affects all of humanity. But the second evolution is the one that we own, how we choose to evolve in the ways that we want to evolve personally and professionally. And so individuals can reach out to me on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm very active on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, that's one of the ways yes. how, how we met. Um, but also uh, through my website, which is www.evolutionevolution.com. The website is about to go under an evolution. There's been so many developments in the past few months. So it's about to have a whole new uh, rebrand look uh, in the next couple of weeks, which is exciting. Uh, and you can email me directly there at brianevolutionevolution.com. Awesome. Incredible. And what kind of clients do you work with at, at Evolution Evolution? Who, who's this yeah, for? Yeah, so Evolution Evolution is primarily focused on uh, professional individuals, okay. uh, individuals that are in some type of professional leadership, whether they are um, CEOs, which I work with, or they're a new leader. Uh, and they're looking for support to grow in their career. A lot of people are, are you know, want to be support. They're a new CEO or a new leadership, or they're looking to make a significant career change. Maybe there's something during the pandemic that's been happening, or maybe there's a personal situation that's taken root in your life that now is making you question, wow, I've been an accountant for 15 years and it's <laughs> not bringing me a lot of joy, but you know, I really have always wanted to start my own bakery. But I'm really fearful about how I do that. I love working with those people. But I also work with some clients, too, that, you know, may be trying to, to make some, you know, personal decisions. I'm not a therapist, mm -hmm. but I often tell people the work can feel therapeutic uh, as mm -hmm. we work at personal and professional goals. And my approach is when you are aligned personally, you are fully aligned with your purpose professionally. And that is where you will make the greatest impact and influence as you move forward. I love that. Okay. That's, that's great. That's great. Thank you. Um, I, uh, you know, everything you said today really resonated with me and actually kind of took me back to where I was a couple of years ago. So I'm actually a corporate dropout as well, <laughs> if you want to call it that. Um, but you know, I have gone through some of the things, things that you talked about, the worry, the fear, the self-doubt, the, all of those things. So if you guys are going through that right now, reach out to Brian, have a great conversation with him. As you can see from our call today, he's really open to helping all of, you know, all the people, the clients, the customers, everyone evolve into some of the evolutions that he's gone through and things. So mm -hmm. that, that was really good. I really enjoyed that today, Brian. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Great questions. And joy to be with you. You two have great energy together and, and it just really flows very naturally. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Brian. We are humbled by your presence with us here today. And we thank you for inspiring our Rise Today community with your inspired action. And listeners, we hope you are empowered to own your own evolution and to take charge and to live out your legacy today and to take control of your happiness, your well-being, and your success, both personally and professionally. Thank you, Brian, for being here with us today. It's a real honor. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you listeners for joining us on episode number 12 today. We hope you feel inspired to seek that inspired action from within. Listen to yourself, listen to your heart, and really chase your desires and your purpose in life. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are turning in from. Have a great week and we will see you again next time. Thank you. Rise, Rise today. All the best. It's going to be a good day. Thanks so much for joining us today. Take this inspiration forward. Learn more at risetoday.com forward slash podcast. And please do help us in our mission to spread hope, inspiration and positivity by encouraging those in your circle to join us and to tune in for our next show of inspiration coming soon. Please contact us if you have a powerful story to share with us to inspire the world. Until next time, get out there and rise today.